In my opinion, the subtotal function in Excel is way better than the sum function in Excel. Because look at this example that I have here. I have a data set with a lot of information and I'm using the subtotal function to calculate the total cost, total price, and also the max and minimum margin, and also to count the total orders that I have. However, whenever I filter or sort the data, let's say I only want to see the values that correspond to the February month. I'm going to hit enter and look what's going to happen with the values above. Enter. All those values were automatically updated for me. This is the benefit to use the subtotal function in Excel. The values are going to be automatically updated whenever you filter or sort the data. Okay, before we get started, I think it's very important to have a data set in Excel because from the data set, we're going to be able to use the subtotal function. And if you don't have a data set in Excel, you can download the sample file for free. Just click in the link in the description down below. That way you can follow with me this tutorial, let's say. Uh, let's start here with counting the total orders that I have. Or before it, let's understand what I have as the data set. I have information such as the order ID, the date, the brand name, the product. Basically, I have a sales report. Quantity, total cost, total price, margin, customer name. And the last information is about the region. Let's say the first analysis that I want to create here in my data set is I want to count everything that I have within the orders ID. I want to know what is the total orders that I have. Basically, each one of the rows are an individual order. So I need to count those rows. But instead of manually count or instead of using the equal sign, count a function, for example, to count everything that I have, I want to use the equal size subtotal function. Because with the subtotal function, I have within this function the count a function. And the benefit, as we saw before, is Whenever I filter my data set, the subtotal result will be automatically updated. So let's double click here in the count a function, one, two to select, and then comma. The reference that I want to use is all the values that I have, are all the values that I have. So I need to either click, hold, and drag like this to select the range, or I can click, uh, as you can see in the header, there is a black down arrow. So I'm going to click in this spot, and that way I can select everything within this column. And yeah, that's it. Now I can press enter. And as you can see, the total orders that I have is equal to 2746. But if I go to, let's say, the products column and I click in the filter and I want to see everything that is equal to creatine and omega-3 only, all the other options, I'm going to leave it blank. I'm going to hit enter or click OK. It's going to work in the same way. Let me hit enter here. And as you can see, the result now is different. 1869. That way we know that uh, it's working. So this is how basically we can use the subtotal function in Excel with a practical example. Now let me read it off the filter. Click here and then clear your filter from product. Let's do other examples. Let's say now I want to make an addition or add up all the values that I have within the total cost. I can go here underneath the total cost header. And I, in this blue cell, I can equal sign and then subtotal again. Double click, one, two to select. As the function that I want to use, I want to stick with uh, sum, number nine, one, two, okay, and then a comma. And as the first reference, or as the only reference that we're going to have, that is the range that we're going to use, I want to use the total cost. So I can, again, select either a small range like this, or go to the header where I have the total cost. And whenever I see the black arrow pointing down, I can click, because that way I can select the entire range within the total cost column. Now I'm going to press enter. And as you can see, this is the total cost column. And if I filter the data, this value is going to be automatically updated for me. But before we do it, let's create one more subtotal function. Equal sign, subtotal, want you to select. Now again, I want to have an addition of values. So I want to use the sum function, one, two, comma. The range now is going to be within the total price, like this. Enter, OK. Now let's say I want to see the values that correspond to the region, uh, maybe east. And then I'm going to click OK, or I'm going to press Enter. And as you can see, the values were updated for me. Let me clear the filter. OK, now let's do the maximum and minimum value. Equal sign, subtotal function. I want to use the max, one, two, comma. And I want to see what is the largest value that I have within the margin. So again, let's select this range within the margin and then press Enter. OK, the largest one is 80%. I can also change in the Home tab. The decimal places i want to use more decimal places one two okay like this that way i have more preciseness let's say equal sign subtotal once you to select i want to use now a minimum function 
to take the smallest value within this range that we have, comma, my range is going to be the margin, okay, enter, and yeah, 10%. Let's again increase the decimal places. One, two, okay, that's it. So basically, we saw here how can we use the maximum and minimum and also create additions with the subtotal function and also how to use the count a function within the subtotal function. But as we saw before, if you type equal sign subtotal function, we have a lot of options to use. So you have average, count, count a, max, mean product and on and on and on let's say you don't know what is the purpose of the count a or count function let's say count function you don't know how to use it the count function that we have here or this entire list of functions that you, you have is basically the same functions that you have normally in excel so let's take the count as an example count let's go here equal sign count function and as you can see, the count function counts the number of cells in a range that contains numbers. So now you know how to use and what is the purpose of the count function. It's going to count everything that is equal to a number. And then you can go back to the equal sign subtotal function and then use the count function if you need to use it. Because now you know how to use it. And that's it. So this is how we can use the subtotal function in Excel instead of using the common or standard functions like we are used to. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below, and I see you tomorrow as every day has a new video. I see you there.